So are we hopelessly at the mercy of advertisers who can manipulate us with attractive and credible communicators? I hope not, otherwise I've got a lot of skincare products to buy after we finish here. Surely, sometimes we must be influenced by the content of the message itself. Under what circumstances does the content of the message influence our attitudes? To answer this question, we need to consider the process by which attitudes can be changed. There's a set of models in the attitude change literature called the dual process models that describe the way we're influenced by persuasive messages. The two main dual process models are the elaboration likelihood model and the heuristic systematic model. These are dual process models because they describe two ways in which things happen. According to Petty and Cassiopo in 1986, while there are some fine distinctions between the two models, they generally make the same predictions. So for our purposes, we'll focus on the elaboration likelihood model. This model describes two distinct modes or routes to persuasion, the central and peripheral routes, which involve different amounts of thinking. Attitudes are influenced by different things according to which route is used. We refer to the amount of thinking in terms of how much you elaborate about a persuasive message. Elaboration is measured by looking at the number of positive and negative thoughts you have about a message. So basically, if you can generate a lot of pros and cons when you're given a persuasive message, we would say that you're showing a high degree of elaboration. So what happens when you hear a persuasive message? How does that potentially change our attitudes? For the central route, the amount of favourable elaboration about the message influences persuasion. The more that you can think of benefits compared to costs, the more you'll be persuaded. Whether the message is associated with some sort of positive stimuli, like an attractive communicator, is pretty unimportant. Attitude change is a result of the quality of the argument itself. For the peripheral route, the strength of the message content is less important. You're more persuaded if the message is associated with other things that are positively evaluated. For example, if you have a positive stereotype about the type of person giving you the message, you'll be more persuaded by the message. This means attitude change is more the result of some type of appeal to your emotion. It sounds like we should always use the central route to persuasion, as this makes use of the most careful type of thinking. The problem is that it takes time and effort to use that way of thinking about things. We simply wouldn't be able to get through the day. If we got thirsty, we'd spend forever comparing the nutritional value of every drink in the store before making a purchase. So when do we use each route? We use the central route when an issue is important to us, when we have the time and the cognitive capacity to think about the issue. We tend to use the peripheral route when the issue is not so important to us, when there's limited time to think about the message or when we're distracted. One of the underlying assumptions of all these models of attitude change is that message recipients like to put in the minimum amount of cognitive effort possible. This has led to some people referring to message recipients as cognitive misers or mental sluggards. Despite this somewhat pessimistic view about how we evaluate persuasive messages, these models do highlight the distinct ways that we think about persuasive messages. Sometimes we do take a lot of care in evaluating persuasive messages, but in other contexts, when there's limited time, we're more affected by factors such as credibility or attractiveness of the communicator.